Hello, this is CJ Hoyle, and welcome to the fourth episode in my Eastern Ontario Bike Tour series. Today is day number four of my nine-day trip, and I'll be riding from Voyageur Provincial Park to a small campground just outside the community of Rockland. So after exiting the park, my route will take me west and past the community of Hawkesbury. I'll be riding through mostly farmland, but along the way I'll pass through the community of Alfred and also the community of Plantagenet, where I'll stop for lunch. After lunch, I'll be following a zigzagging route of roadways, which will eventually lead me to my campground. In the evening, I'll be visiting the nearby community of Rockland, where I'll stop for my dinner. So today is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019, and I woke up at my campsite at Voyageur Provincial Park at around 7 a.m. As usual, my morning began with a delicious serving of campsite overnight oats. By 8.30, I had my bike loaded, and I was ready to begin another exciting day of riding. When I woke up this morning, the temperature was down to about 10 degrees Celsius, so I'm wearing my jacket to begin the ride, but I can already feel it starting to warm up. I'm pleased to have been able to get a much earlier start on my ride today than I did yesterday. When I went to bed last night, it had been raining, but by the morning the rain had stopped, which made the process of getting packed up happen more quickly. After crossing over Highway 417, I rode along the quiet service road which runs next to it. Not long after, I had to cross over the same highway once again at the point where 417 curves and heads southwest. From here on out though, I don't think I'll see any more freeways until at least tomorrow when I'll be riding through the city of Ottawa. The township I'm currently riding through is called East Hawkesbury, but here I'm now entering the township of Champlain. Both of these townships are located within the United Counties of Prescott and Russell. Just north of where I'm riding now is the town of Hawkesbury, but I won't be riding through it on this trip. After seeing this moose crossing sign, I was sure to keep my eyes out for wildlife. I didn't see any moose, but I did see a family of wild turkeys, similar to the ones I saw yesterday morning. The time is now 10 a.m., and the temperature has risen to about 16 degrees Celsius, which is a really comfortable temperature for bike riding in my opinion. Corn and soybeans seem to be the most dominant crop in this region, much like the other areas I've been riding so far on this trip. Next to one of the houses on this road, I noticed this very unique looking religious structure. I've also been noticing a number of houses which have solar tracker photovoltaic panels like the ones you can see here. I'm now entering the community of Alfred, which has a population of a little over a thousand. Despite having been named after one of the sons of King George III, Alfred is a predominantly Francophone community. The current time is only about 11 o'clock, so it's too early for me to stop for lunch, but I did drop by the Value Mart grocery store to stock up on a few items. It looks like Tuesday must be garbage day here in Alfred, and now that the long weekend is over, today is the first day of school for a lot of children. These quiet country roads I've found are just so wonderful for cycling on, it's no surprise that I'm not the only person out riding today. The path from my starting point to my ending point today is well served by Highway 17, but the route I plan links together a series of quiet paved roads like this one, which have minimal amounts of traffic. As I was riding, I spotted another wild turkey by the side of the road. I'm now approaching the community of Plantagenet, which is located within the same township as Alfred. Much like Alfred, Plantagenet's name originates from the British royal family, but it's another community where French is the primary first language. Plantagenet was first settled in 1811, and it's situated on the South Nation River. If you'll recall from earlier in the series, I crossed this river further upstream back on day two of this trip. The time is now just a bit past noon, and having ridden 59 kilometers so far today, I'm ready to stop for lunch. I selected a popular local spot called Patati Patata and ordered an all-dressed poutine. Poutine is a French-Canadian dish which consists of French fries topped with cheese curds and gravy, and this all-dressed variety has several other toppings as well. It's not exactly the type of thing that you'd want to eat every day of your life, but it is a pretty delicious meal and something worth experiencing while traveling through French Canada. After my lunch, I continued my ride heading west. I noticed these cows standing close to the side of the road, so I stopped to watch them. As a guy who lives in the middle of Canada's largest city, cows are not something that I get to see every day. Another thing that I've been enjoying today is that there's been virtually no wind once again. Since the prevailing wind is from the west, if it had been windy, there's a good chance I would have been fighting against it today. This area I'm riding through is labeled on the map as Centerfield, and I believe this building is an old one-room schoolhouse. My agricultural scenery has been briefly interrupted by forest, as there's a wide vein of woodlands here towards the west end of the township of Alfred and Plantagenet. Over on the right I'm riding past the Gatineau Gliding Club, but I don't see anyone out gliding today. 
If today had been a weekend though, there's a good chance it would have been able to stop and watch unpowered glider sailplanes being towed into the air by regular aircraft and then released to soar through the air on their own. I've thoroughly been enjoying the scenery today and these roads really couldn't be any more perfect for riding on. When I was planning my route for today, I had the option of traversing a set of roadways which closely follow along the Ottawa River, but I chose this inland route instead. I've now crossed into the city of Clarence Rockland, which includes the community of St. Pascal Balon, where I'm riding now. Although Clarence Rockland is formally called the city, it's really just an amalgamation of the town of Rockland with Clarence Township. As I've been riding today, I've been enjoying listening to a lot of interesting local radio stations on my portable AM FM radio. The next community I'm approaching is called Clarence Creek, which is also part of the city of Clarence Rockland. Up ahead I spotted a road close sign, and because of my experience from yesterday I stopped and talked to a man who was outside one of the nearby houses and asked him the details of this closure. He told me that the construction shouldn't prevent me from riding through, and he was correct. I'd say this is my experience about 90% of the time when it comes to road close signs, but if the road had been closed due to a bridge replacement, I would have needed to figure out an alternate route. The time is now about 3 o'clock, and I've ridden 94 kilometers so far today. Up ahead I've got a nice hill to ride down that will take me to my campground, which is over on the left. This road I'm on forms the eastern boundary of the city of Ottawa, so the campground is technically located in Ottawa. So this campground that I'm staying at tonight is called Recreation Land, and it's privately owned. When I arrived at the office there was a sign on the door, but after a short wait I was able to purchase a camping permit for the night. After arriving kind of late at my campsite yesterday, it's nice to be here early and be able to relax a bit before getting all my gear unpacked and set up. On this September Tuesday, the park is quite empty for the most part. However, believe it or not, I'm not the only person who's camping here tonight who arrived here by bicycle. This is the Barrio Bicycle Camper, which was hand-built by Robert Barrio, who lives in Gatineau, Quebec. The entire thing folds down and wheels are installed, and he tows it behind his electric assist bicycle from one campsite to another. I immediately recognized this camper from a series of YouTube videos that Robert posted, where he towed this camper all the way from the Peace Tower in Ottawa to the CN Tower in Toronto. What an amazing coincidence that the two of us who make YouTube videos about bike touring in Canada both decided to stay at the same campground on the same night. Robert has a really interesting YouTube channel, so if you're interested in learning more about this camper or his travels with it, I would definitely recommend checking out the links in the description below. The time is now about 5 o'clock, which I decided is a good time for me to begin my journey to Rockland, where I can find a restaurant to have my dinner. To get there I had the option of climbing back up the big hill and retracing some of the quiet roads I had taken earlier, but I elected to instead take the more direct route, which goes along Highway 17. With only a very narrow paved shoulder, this road has quite a bit more traffic on it than one I prefer, but thankfully the distance to the edge of town is only about 2.5 kilometers. There's some nice scenery on this road overlooking the Ottawa River to my left. Although I didn't get to see very much this river today, on my ride tomorrow I'll be following alongside it for a good portion of the day. Named for the rocky nature of its landscape, Rockland was first settled in the 1860s when a sawmill was built here. This big church on the left is the Padawa St. Trinity, or translated to English, the Very Holy Trinity Parish. The time is now about 5.30, and as I'm riding around exploring, I'm also keeping my eyes open for dinner options. Rockland has a current population of about 11,000, but a lot of its population growth has happened within the last 20 years, as it was transformed into a suburb of Ottawa. For dinner I decided on a Mediterranean restaurant called Sparta's. Since the lunch I had today wasn't exactly the most healthy choice, and I'm still feeling full from it, I decided to just order a Greek salad with chicken for my dinner tonight. After finishing my meal I wanted to explore a bit more around Rockland. There's quite a steep hill to ride down between the area where the main street is and the edge of the river. Much like the other communities I visited today and yesterday, Rockland has a population which primarily speaks French as their first language. This flag here with the fleur-de-lis on the left and the trillium on the right is the official Franco-Ontarian flag. Even though Ontario is a primarily English-speaking province, there are actually more than 600,000 Francophones who live in Ontario. Roughly 40% of that French-speaking population is concentrated here in eastern Ontario. On the ride back to my campsite, 
I'm noticing that there's some light rain which has started spitting. This is certainly not a big surprise, considering the weather forecast is calling for a third rainy night in a row. After I arrived back at the campground, I made a stop at the restroom building to have a quick shower. Over in the adjacent campsite, I noticed that Robert had configured his camper into sleeping mode and already retreated inside for the night. With the rain still coming down, I climbed inside my tent for an early night. The rain stayed light for most of the evening, but at around 3 a.m. it started coming down really hard and lasted for about an hour. Nevertheless, I still managed to have a nice restful sleep inside my dry tent. So including my journey to Rockland tonight, I rode my bike a total of 111 kilometers today. Stay tuned for the next episode in my Eastern Ontario Bike Tour series, where tomorrow on day 5 I'll be following along beside the Ottawa River and passing through the city of Ottawa en route to Fitzroy Provincial Park. I hope you enjoyed joining me for day number 4 of my trip. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.